Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2 Tutorial 4. This tutorial will uh, review accounting for customer loyalty programs. There's basically one learning objective for this tutorial and that is to review how to account for customer loyalty programs. This tutorial is based on the Indiana Mills or IMI example, so please make sure that you download the correct file that contains the data and requirements for this problem and review it thoroughly before proceeding. We will look at the first requirement, which is to prepare the necessary journal entries to account for the sales of the Cranberry brand cereal and for the incentive program during the year. Okay, so let's begin. During 2021, the company sold 700,000 boxes of cereal at $8 a box. So cash is debited for 5,600,000 and cereal sales are credited for 5,600,000. Of course, there is a corresponding cost of goods sold entry the cost of goods sold on the product is $2 a box, so debit cost of goods sold for a million four and credit serial inventory for $1,400,000. Okay, once we've recorded all of the sales, we now have to prepare a journal entry to record the estimated redemptions for the gizmo promotion. As indicated in the data, the company sold 700,000 boxes of cereal. In order to redeem for a gizmo, customers have to return 100 UPC codes or box tops, so basically the equivalent to 200 boxes. And the company estimates that 60% of the boxes sold will be redeemed for a gizmo. And the gizmo has a $50 fair value. So what we're going to do is debit promotion revenues for $210,000, which is 700,000 divided by 100 times 60% times $50. And we will credit unearned revenue for the gizmo promotion. Now it's important to note what's going on here. What happens here is the estimated redemptions are temporarily debited to the promotional revenues account. And this has the effect of lowering total combined sales by the fair value of the incentive. So even though the company sold cereal for $5.6 million, we have a debit here to a promotional revenue account for the fair value of the gizmo. What this implies is that cereal sales include gizmos that have a value of $50, the revenue of which cannot actually be recognized until a customer claims it or redeems. So total net sales and revenues are temporarily reduced by the 210,000 based on estimated redemptions. Then we can record a journal entry for the actual gizmos redeemed. In actual fact, the equivalent to 550,000 boxes were redeemed. So 550,000 divided by 100 codes is 5,500 boxes times a $50 fair value of the gizmo. So now we will debit the unearned revenue account for the gizmo promotion for 275,000 and credit promotional revenues of 275,000. It's now that we are redeeming the actual gizmos that were recorded cost of goods sold. The company doesn't manufacture gizmos, it sells cereal. So it has to go and purchase gizmos. So what happens here is the cost of the gizmo is $20. So we'll, the journal entry to record the cost of goods on the gizmo promotion is 5,500 units or gizmos at $20 is a cost of goods of 110,000. And we would credit inventory or if the company did not pre-purchase the gizmos, we could credit cash or accounts payable or something else. So what happens here is now that some of the customers redeem or claim the gizmo, the revenue for them can be recognized with a corresponding match cost of goods sold. When this happens, the net sales or revenues are now increased by 275,000 based on actual redemptions. So now we'll proceed with requirement two, which is to determine the balance in the unearned revenue account at December 31st, 2021. This won't take very long. So here is our liability account under revenues for the gizmo promotion. We are told that the beginning balance in a promotion account is $75,000. At the time the company sold the boxes of cereal, the estimated redemptions was recorded. So 210,000 is credit to the account. And then the actual redemptions of 275 are debited out of the account leaving a balance at the end of 2021 to be carried forward if the promotion continues or if further gizmos can be redeemed. If the promotion ends and no more gizmos can be redeemed, then this amount of $10,000 would have to be removed and therefore would be reversed. Now we'll close with some key points to remember. 
Loyalty rewards are considered to be a separate component of the sales transaction, and any resulting liability is reported based on the fair value of the awards for which points or UPC codes or whatever could be redeemed. Regular product sales are indirectly deemed to include some type of reward in these cases that have a tangible value, but that product or the incentive or the reward is not actually sold until it's redeemed at some point in the future. Next, estimated redemptions will give rise to unearned revenues or an unearned revenue liability and a corresponding debit to the promotion revenue account or some other similarly named account thereby temporarily reducing total sales and revenues by the amount of that estimated fair value. Normally, we're used to crediting revenues. Debiting them means that they are reversed. And then actual redemptions are recognized as revenue with a corresponding match cost of goods sold when the customer redeems. So this concludes tutorial four on accounting for customer loyalty programs. We hope you found it useful.